And so what ends up happening, this is an example from a case that we just went to trial on, is that when you blow it up, this is what you get from the laboratory information system. It's a one-sheet conclusion, and what the one-sheet conclusion is when you blow it up and you take a look at it, it says a 0 0.127 uh, abnormal result for alcohol, but if you notice there, it says whole blood. It is not an expression of whole blood. And the reason why is not just because you understand the process now, that it's not an expression of whole blood, but because if you, and you know, that's unfortunately your client, most of the time you sit there and go, oh my God, he's screwed, right? I mean, at the end of the day. But that's only because you take a look at that one sheet of paper. Let me ask you a question. If you got a police report that simply said your client was drunk, would you just sit there and go, shit, I, you know, I, I give up, <laughs> right? I'm done. But why do we do that when we get a result? Why do we sit there and go, well, we got one piece of paper that says one, two, whatever it is, whole blood, you know, one, two, seven, whole blood. Well, geez, we're done. Of course not. You wouldn't accept that when a police officer tries that business. Don't accept it when a lab tries to do that business because the devil's in the details. If you know the process, what comes out of the machine is not a whole blood result, but they're reporting it as a whole blood result. And the reason why you can catch them is not just knowing the SOP that we just went through, the standard operating procedure, but you can also take a look at the details. This is the instrument tape ticket. This is what it actually prints out, or something like this, depending upon your machine. So we're going to blow it up and take a look at it. This is from a different case, but this is the, one of the best illustrations that are out there. Some mood music. It's, it's, it's tranquil. <laughs> So anyway, you get the evidence ticket that comes out of the machine, and what you can see there very plainly, very plainly, is it says serum. That's why you got to go back and not just accept the police officer saying to you, your guy's drunk. Don't accept the analyst coming in there and saying, your guy's a 127. Peel back the onion, go get the tickets, and you can see right in there that it's a serum. Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, of course, if you if you sit back and you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Alcohol. I mean, in our in our daily living, we know what alcohol is like. Blood is a lot heavier than that, and that's because of all the junk that's inside of it. So you're right. It does separate out to the top. That's a good point. So you can catch them with their own stuff inside the lab when you take it when you when you peel back the onion. But it gets more complicated than that. This is what's called a calibration curve. It's not important for you to know what it means, but a calibration curve is the way that the analytical device is shown to be within tolerance, within range, that it's accurate and it's precise. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand a lot of this stuff. It's low-hanging fruit that anyone can understand. So what this is, is they're trying to run through the machine and make sure that it's accurate and it's precise, and they're comparing known standards and seeing what the machine does with that. But the reason why it's low-hanging fruit is because it'll tell you oftentimes the problems that go along with it. So blowing this up, we take a look at it, and come on. You can see right up here, it's in your materials, it says calibration status not accepted. Calibration status not accepted. I mean, who in this room would think that that means the thing's okay, <laughs> right? I mean, you don't have to be an analytical chemist with a PhD in order to say, boy, if something ain't calibrated, it ain't working right. It's not good. But then you take a look and you just look a little bit later down, and hell, I don't know what this means, but I learned what it meant. You could take a look right there where you have negative numbers. If you're measuring something, especially something like alcohol, think about this. Zero means nothing. How can you have a negative value that it's really, really not there? I mean, just you have to really sit back and think about these things. And it even says it right there when we take a look at it. It says error assay range. But because it's good enough for government work, what does the analyst do? The analyst says A-OK. -okay. Yes? That, that you have on the screen, is that done? Is that a lab report? Or how would we get that? What you're going to do is you're going to request what's called the calibration curve. One of the things I'll do is I'll email uh, my super subpoena that I have and uh, discovery request, and it's going to be 
in the liege of documents that you have there. Look, it, 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 and so this is particularly how you're going to get it is through subpoenaing and asking for it and getting it and insisting that you do and using these types of things as examples of what can go wrong. And so, like I said, it's low-hanging fruit. So in this particular case, because we have five years' worth of data on this particular machine, everyone from the date of this, which was July 30th, 2007, and they calibrated every 60 days, because he forced an agreement and said it was okay, everyone for that 60 days was getting screwed. And that's a lot of people. Okay? But the next time, the next time that came out, they did a new calibration curve that's there. And again, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. So this one, the low range values, says that it was outside the assay range. In this particular one, again, what you have is the high values. So they couldn't get it right low. The next time around, they couldn't get it right high. And so they just couldn't get it right, but they couldn't figure it out. So they just kept on testing people. And so you bring this in front of juries or you bring it in front of judges, judges understand that because, you know, it's not, it's low-hanging fruit. And it just says stuff like not accepted. I mean, geez, not accepted. You know, that's pretty powerful loaded language at the end of the day. So it's something that you really have to take a look at. And it doesn't take rocket science. You just have to be exposed to it by coming to these great seminars and knowing that it's out there instead of just accepting one piece of paper. Don't accept the traffic cop saying, oh, you're guilty. Don't accept the lab scientists trying to do the same jazz too. Make sure it's right. Be their external validation check. And then you get beautiful stuff like this. Okay, northern Pennsylvania, extremely rural. I ask for the uh, discovery in this particular case. I'm not going to say what county it's in, and I've redacted a little bit of it because it's going to be litigated. It's going to be like a Pearl Harbor moment in their life. They're not going to see this coming. But when I asked for it, this analyst, basically what it says here is sample, it said plasma, and they put on their ticket here, when completing whole blood alcohols, what we're supposed to be doing, put a line through plasma sample and write in whole blood filtrate on all printouts. <laughs> you can't make that stuff up, right? I mean, you know, that happens out there. It probably happens in your state. And it's not because this person is trying to be a crook. It's because it's run, the machines are run by operators that are not hardcore scientists. Generally, what they are is people who have maybe an associate's degree or they were nurses and they wanted to work in the lab because they got sick of working with people. So they got retasked, reassigned, and removed over. And then, you know, it's not like they're trying to screw your clients. They don't understand the distinction and how important it is. But you can, so you can understand it. So it's not really important that you understand all the jiggy jazz inside the machine. You just have to understand the process. You have to understand that there's information out there that you should be getting in order to make things right. So again, whether or not you know the particular scientific breakdown of the machine is not as important as understanding, again, the process that's there.